You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive Scottish football content. Hi folks and welcome to the latest episode of the SM Media Scottish Football Show. I'm Scott McPike, it's an absolute pleasure to be your host as always. We've got a, a good panel this week, we're delighted to be joined by, welcoming back to the show, Stevie Murray. Stevie, welcome back, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thanks very much Scott, nice to be on. It's an absolute pleasure as always and making his first appearance on the show, I'm delighted to welcome Matthew Muir. Mal- Matthew, welcome to the show, no apologies, Malcolm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no problem, thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. We will obviously get into the games over the weekend. We've a, a lot to get through in the Premiership. We went on last week, so we'll kind of touch a wee bit on what happened last week as well. Mother will obviously sack Graham Alexander following the bad exit to Sligo in the Europa Conference League. Celtic Rangers obviously got off to big starts. Hibs and Hearts obviously won. We'll get into them later on as they played against each other. And it was overall a kind of good week last week. But we'll get into the action this week. We'll start at Dingwall. Ross County 1, Celtic 3. Celtic had to work for it, Stevie. Celtic had to come back from Ross County kind of stuffing them for a, a large part of the game. It was a terrific goal by Kyogo to give them the lead. Ikevite equalised for Ross County, taking advantage of a kind of bad, it was a bad kind of corner as well. But Celtic kind of showed their resilience. Jens with his first goal in his debut and Leo Abada making it three. Stevie, that's a big win for Celtic, obviously. I know it's only two games in, but these are the games you want and you need to win if you're going for the, to win the title again. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I, it's always a tricky game going up there. I don't know what it is. The last season, obviously, it was a late winner by Anthony Ralston as well. Um, I thought, a wee, me- a wee mention for Joe, I thought it was fantastic. It was all- tremendous. And it was last week as well. Like, he just- for me, he's just unplayable. I mean, I think he knows, making it a permanent move, he knows this is now... I don't think he thinks it's a short window. However, the size of club Celtic are and the stage they're going to be playing on in terms of Champions League and that this year... If he takes his game up another couple of notches, he's going to be he's going to be getting suitors for down south, but absolutely no doubt about that. But um, ah, it's a massive result. It, it might be early on in the season, but you know what it's like. Scott, as soon as you drop two points, it's an absolute disaster. You're you're one game away for a disaster up here in this country. So it's a massive one for Celtic. Yeah, as well. Obviously, like the likes of Kyogo scoring his first goal of the season. I thought as well, like the Jack Marcus coming on and kind of changed the game, brought Celtic into it. Jens with his debut goal. That's good for kind of for him to get that wee boost in his first game. Matthew, who was your thoughts in the Celtic game on Saturday? I think, um, you know, um, obviously signing Jota permanently is obviously quite a shrewd move for um, Porto Conference. You know, I think Celtic obviously want to push, obviously want to improve and push on to win the league this year. I think um, it's also important to mention that Ross County does frustrate Celtic at times. And I think that, um, I think Malcolm McKay's um, Got a good, a good, a good squad up there. You know, good, good death as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I think Ross County will be fine. To be honest, I think they've got the, they've got enough to to certainly be safe for relegation, and I think they've got more than enough to challenge for top six again. I think they're a good side. Stevie, we mentioned obviously the how good the squad depth Celtic have now compared to last season. You look at the their bench in the first games of last season and to now, and they can bring on the likes of Jack and Marcus Abada. Forest obviously there. You've got kind of Aaron Moy to come on. You've it's it's so much different to what it was last year, and it just goes down to good recruitment and just knowing that I think Postacoglu knew in the summer getting the loan players in and a permanent deal and just filling the squad with what he needed to. Like obviously bringing in a left back for competition for Greg Taylor and Moy. Obviously, is just a another piece to that midfield, and I think the midfield's obviously a bit settled now. Like so they seem to be getting it right. They seem to be just a couple of players away in the summer to just having everything kind of settled and I think now they're, they're getting there. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I think a lot of it's to do with the players that he's brought in buying into the the, 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 the philosophy of play that Postacoglu has and the way that they get after teams and the fitness levels and the, the fullbacks being so high up the pitch and so far tucked in. A lot of them are just buying into it and it's working a treat for Celtic. I mean, they look, they look very strong. That was him yesterday without Hitati. In Welsh, and Welsh was arguably the man of the match against Aberdeen. So 
It's uh, it's looking good. Don't get me wrong. It's the second game of the season, right? Everybody looks good at the start when the pitches are nice and mm-hmm. everybody's desperate to play football. But um, I'll I'll revisit it again when it's a Tuesday night away to Aberdeen and there's a hundred and seventy mile an hour wind behind that goal up there, you know. So if they can get a result up there in a, a night like that, then I'll be I'll be a lot happier. Yeah, I think I think that's fair to say. I think obviously we're at the early stage. Matthew, what do you think about Celtic obviously going forward? They've got like Jota. Do you think it will be hard to to keep a hold of him? Maybe if he's if he's keeping these levels of performance up, Celtic are playing with house money, to be honest, because he's going to make such a profit going forward. Yeah, I mean, I suppose if you if you look at Rangers, you know, obviously Jordi Bo and Calvin Bassey have obviously moved on. So if you, obviously they both did really well for Rangers last year. So if he continues to improve, the Celtic can set that bad then you know, clubs will look um, to move him down south. And, you know, um, it's very much, you know, especially with Rangers and Celtics, you know, there is a big gulf in terms of finance, when you, especially with clubs down in the Premier League. So I definitely wouldn't be surprised if he did um, move on at some point, if he keeps the bar. Yeah, it was terrific again on Saturday. You just looked at the three goals. It's, the, it's not just, the, obviously, the, the three assists, it's the way assists. Like it's just... Not that intelligence or knows where to put the ball. You see the clinical of the clinical nature of Kyogo just being in the right place, finish for a bad as well. Like they just know how to, it's just that connection you build in the training ground, uh, knowing where each other are. And I just I thought Jota was at the centre of everything for Celtic Saturday, and I think he is. I think he is terrific. I really do. We'll move on to Ibrooks Rangers. We're looking to get back after a really disappointing two 0 defeat in the Champions League on Tuesday night to USG. Cholak and Morelos coming back from a long-term injury to score the second goal and give Rangers the three points. Matthew, I think Rangers needed that result on Saturday, not just for the fact, obviously, it's three points in the league, but they looked a lot more direct. They were getting a lot of shots away. They were they were looking as if, I think, the new signings were kind of gelling a bit together. I thought Tom Lawrence was really good. I thought Davis came in, steadied that midfield. I know the, the midfield was a talking point on Tuesday night that they were doing the same job. I don't think Rangers have a player like Stephen Davis, like, a, apart from him, who can go in and just control that game. I think he was he was excellent, to be honest. I thought Rangers just looked a lot better on Saturday, and I think they were beginning to get it, kind of gel together ahead of a massive game on Tuesday night. Yeah, I think um, it's really vital that Rangers won the game on Saturday. I think um, really important, you know, with um, Antonio Colac getting his first goal and Wales getting the second on the return after five months, which actually is quite a lengthy time out. And I think um, when you look at that, you know, it's really important that you get your strikers confidence up, especially when you look towards next Tuesday as well. So I think quite very pleasing for Van Bronckhorst. Yeah, absolutely. I think as well, Stevie, like when you look at the likes of Cholak and Morelos getting the goals, like Cholak in particular, like, what he's, what he's had to kind of deal with in the press with, like, Mark Cately. I don't, I, everybody knows that Mark Cately's a, a god at Ibrox, but to come out and say that a striker's a waste of time after two games, it just, it must... It, yeah. What does that do to a player's confidence and how big's a goal, like, Saturday, just to kind of ease that and ease the fans' pressure as well, because it was getting a bit kind of too far. Like, I think they were, I think he was getting too unfairly overjudged after two games. I just think, I just don't think it was right, to be honest. No, I agree. I absolutely agree with you. I guess it depends on the player's mentality because a lot of players at the top level would use something like that as fuel, you know, to, to go and fuel their desire to go and make it better, play better, score goals and kind of shove it in their face, so to speak. And that's certainly the way I like to carry myself. If somebody was giving me pelters, I'd love to do something and, and, and affect the game in a positive fashion. Um I don't know. I, I don't know how you can write somebody off after two games. Actually, looking at him in the games, he was actually playing okay. He was he was linking the play up. He was holding up as much as he could. Cut off side a couple of times. Maybe missed a couple of chances. But I mean, that's his what his third competitive game. game. Oh, so I mean, if he finishes the season one and three or one and two, we having Morelos in the team as well. I think that's still not a bad sign, isn't it? Be fair. Yeah, I think as well. Like you, you look at the. The game, the Livingston game, he's, he didn't get a lot of service. There was a lot of things that, but he does, although it, it was arguable if it was offside or not, but he's very good for that that header that was disallowed. Like he's just in the right place. It's a terrific ball in, gets on the top of it. Tuesday night, I think the lack of service was 
ridiculously bad. You could have had Robert Lewandowski in that Rangers team on Tuesday night, and I don't think you would have got a goal. I just think there was so I don't put that down to the the striker. I just think it was a there was a real lack of creativity on Tuesday night. But he comes in. I think for the first goal, I think Joe Lack on Saturday he comes in. He's actually done. He actually does really well to keep that ball to give that ball to Lawrence because it's obviously the counter of a mistake. Joe Lack gets the ball, takes a heavy touch is able to kind of recover himself and get it to Lawrence, get back on his feet and gets it back off Lawrence and puts it away really good. I think it's a really good goal. And I think and it shows that he's a finisher. I think it shows that he can he can get, if you give him a chance, he's going to take it. But Matthew, how big is it obviously for Rangers to have Alfredo Morelos back? You saw the reaction to him coming back and coming in. He's obviously, he'll, he'll take a bit of time it's to get kind of fully match fit, but obviously that's where, get, that's where kind of coming on in games gives you that. Match sharpness, but having Morelos back is a big plus. Yeah, I mean, definitely. And I think, um, especially when you look on to um, Tuesday night's game as well, you know, it's a really good confidence boost for the squad. I mean, we all know we can certainly put the goals in where, um, when it's needed and where it matters. And I think um, Van Bronckhorst obviously mentioned that um, he thinks that Morelos will just get stronger as the more time it gets match fit. So thing, and um, there was an interview with um, Arthur Newman in the Sunday Post today, just talking about the game and how, you know, it certainly can't get any worse. I mean, just can't from last Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously, Van Bronckhorst is very experienced and, you know, the club will want to get um, to get through into the Champions League playoff round. So, um and, you know, Europa League last year, you know, the bit of Dortmund and the bad stuff in the past, you know, where they've came back from um, a 2 3 goal deficit. So I don't think there's any reason to suggest why Rangers can't, you know, another good night at Ibrox. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point you brought up because we'll, we'll obviously do a wee preview later on in the Rangers game on Tuesday night, but it's that second goal makes it obviously an uphill battle, but... I think Van Bronckhorst just gets tactics wrong. I think he, he set up to make it tight and bring it back to Ibrox with the advantage and it just didn't work out. But an early goal could open that tie wide open. And I think if Rangers have the... They need to play the set. I, I would say maybe one or two tweaks. I would maybe bring in Ryan Kent if he's fit. And I would go with Cholak. I think bring Morelos on a half an hour ago because he's... I don't know if he's full... I don't think he's fully ready to play from the start. I, I don't think Cholak's done anything not to be in contention to start on Saturday, eh, Tuesday, sorry. So I would start with Cholak and if it's not working with half an hour, bring on Morelos and just try and get a get a goal for there and see where it goes. But Stevie, we'll touch on your old club, Club Kelly, obviously. Going to Ibrox, it's Derek McInnes is going to set up one way and it was it was working for a while. It's what you kind of thought of Kelly so far in the first two games. Uh, I think they've done well to come back last week. I, I, I think they're going to do okay. I think they might be round about trying to break into the top six. I think that's where they'll be. I don't think they'll be flirting with relegation. Fingers crossed or no, but I, I just think Dell will be able to set the team up properly. He's an experienced manager. He's been in this position loads of times, obviously with Aberdeen and stuff like that and St. Johnson. So I would imagine he would be, uh, he'd be able to keep them in the higher end of the table. Obviously, I, don't, I wouldn't say they'd be pushing for Europe or something like that, but I would like to think come... The, the, the split that they'll be there or thereabouts to try and get into the to, to maybe scrape into the bottom six. But I mean, what are you supposed to do? You're 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 done whatever way you go to Ibrox and Parkhead. If you go and park the bus, you'll get pelters. If you go and play expansive football, they could rip you to shreds. So uh, it, it, listen, he nearly got it right. If Cholak doesn't score that goal, it goes on another five, ten minutes. What was that? I think it was about fifty one minutes, fifty two minutes yeah. he scores. That goes to an hour. You start getting this fans start to get disgruntled and then the players feel the pressure. So it could have potentially worked, however. Um, big clubs like Rangers always seem to find a way to score a goal, don't they? Yeah, I know. And as you say, like it, it doesn't get any easier for Kelly. Uh, in Saturday, uh, Sunday, Celtic go to Rugby Park. I think once you get by that kind of stage of the, that, the kind of hard first three games have got, I think they, they, they'll get a wee run going. I, do, I don't have any doubts that Kelly are going to be trying to contend for top six. And I think as well, like you see the team set up. There's only, there's It's a case of frustrating and... That's that is the way you need to go, Ibrox. That's what Ibrox and Parkhead. That's what you need to do. You need to defend, and Derek McInnes has done it in the past and done it very effectively. But obviously, Rangers go into Tuesday night with a big 
big kind of confidence boost, and we'll see where that takes them. But we'll move on to Petaudry, Aberdeen four, St Marin one. Very good performance for Aberdeen. All the new signings getting on the score sheet. Uh, Bojan Miofsky with two goals. The new signing Leighton Clarkson from Liverpool straight in and scoring a beautiful goal. And Duke with his first goal in an Aberdeen jersey. St Marin got a consolation through a penalty, but I think Steve is it fair to say that the Declan Gallagher red card kind of changed the changed the concept of the game and Aberdeen just put the foot in the gas from there. Yeah, hundred percent. It's so early in the game as well. You get a red card. It's not like it's the the last kind of 15, 20 minutes. So as soon as that happens, there's just spare man in midfield. You're just going to pass around them all day. I mean, the boy Clarkson's goal was an absolute cracker, wasn't yeah. it? It was a beautiful and the, the, the other boy took his two goals really well as well, and so did the boy Duke. It was a nice wee dinked finish. Um, they, they're looking, I, I, they were looking okay at Celtic Park when I seen the first game. The opening game, they were all right. They didn't get opened up. And there was a stage where it was 1-0 and Aberdeen were pressing a wee bit and they had a couple of wee half chances, so to speak. But uh, I think Aberdeen will be okay. It'll be interesting to see Aberdeen Hearts potentially Hibs, although they're struggling a wee bit. But... Um, to, to see how that works at that top end of the table, to, make, to see if it's going to be the traditional teams that are up there or, or somebody else is going to come for left field to break, the, break that lot up. Yeah, I think as well, as you say about Aberdeen, they're, they're, they've obviously spent the, some of the Calvin Ramsey money, money like that Lewis Ferguson leaving as well. That's hard for a manager, particularly a manager getting into his, his first kind of full season at a big club like that, but he spent money and they look to be doing quite well so far. Miofsky looks a it was a talented player. Duke, I think Duke will take a bit of time to kind of fully get into Scottish football. You look at the things, some of his touches before his goal, I think he's a, he's just learning to get get to grips with the, the nature of Scottish football. But Matthew, Declan Gallagher, I just think that was just going back to Aberdeen, a lot of pressure, a lot of nerves and just a bad decision, really. It's just what happened to, uh, to Declan Gallagher that yeah, Saturday, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Definitely would. And I think, you know, Obviously, very impressive performance from Aberdeen. You know, I, I like the look of the youngster um, Leighton Clarkson. I think his yeah. name is. Um, correct me if I'm wrong there. And I think um, for him to come on, to come on, you know, come on from Liverpool Academy. You know, you obviously think he you you he, he would be a, quite a good find for them. And I think you know, for a guy at his own age and to get a to get a goal, um, can only be a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's good for his confidence. It's good for, for Aberdeen. Stevie St Mirren, it's obviously early days, but you just look at the team and you just think, where's the goals coming from? Where's the the real if if it's in a dog fight and where do they where do they get the, the kind of big goals and big moments from if they want to stay in this league? It just I think they could be a real struggle this season for them. Uh they could be struggling to be fair. It looks uh it doesn't look promising for them. You could see a lot of their tails went between their legs, even when Gallagher was sent off. And before the penalties even hit, you can see the heads going down and the 50 kilogram necklaces going on over their shoulders. And just, but uh, it's, a, it's a hard, hard um, graft if you're going to be down there the full season and you're desperate for points, especially with the pressure that will be on them. So um, hopefully they can try and muster up a result for somewhere. But it would be a big, big season for St. Man because. Uh, it's going to be a somebody could get left down there and left for dead, you know. The other teams will smell blood and just motor away for them. I, I mean, as you say, like it's Stephen Robinson's in there and has experience with Motherwell, but he's going to need to. I think a, a few new players are needed to really kind of get them going. And apart from like Simon Brophy and Alex Greaves, I just don't know where they're going to get their goals from. But we'll move into another team who are desperately in need of some, some good luck coming their way, Motherwell. Lost what two one to St Johnson. They thought they did a they rescued a point with their own goal from Graham Carey, but Stevie May was on hand to give St Johnson the lead straight after losing it. We'll touch in Motherwell's manager situation before we get into the game, Matthew. Graham Alexander's obviously gone. The result in Europe was a big part of that. Stevie Hamill is seems to be kind of I think of a chance of getting the job permanently. I I don't think you can blame him for the for Saturday. I just think there's a lot of toothlessness and kind of lack of mojo around about Motherwell, particularly in the park, but what do we think of Motherwell off the park with the managerial situation? Which are kind of thoughts and who could potentially be in for the job or what's the, is, does Stevie Hamill have a chance of getting it? I think um, I think obviously I don't think the result would have helped you know, Stephen, Stevie Hamill's chances 
but I do think he mentioned, you know, for whoever, go, whoever does get the job, that is a good bit of sense for the need in the squad. I think um, in terms of Graham Alexander, you know, I actually thought he actually did an okay job. I think he's actually quite a decent manager. I think there was mention of um, a lack of pre-season games going into the games against Sligo, so I think this obviously might have had an impact. Um, in terms of managers um, coming in, you know, Marwell always seemed to maybe go down south of the border, as they have done with Stephen Robinson and Graham Alexander in recent years. Um, potentially Paul Lambert, I think he had mentioned that he would be up for an approach if Marwell would contact him. Um, for um, up and coming and managers up here, maybe um, Kevin Thompson. Um, he obviously left, came to Hearts. I think he is looking for to get um, into full time management. And I think, you know, I'm sure he would, he would, you know, aim or have a dream of managing Rangers in the future. And he might see Mahowell as a sort of springboard to get in the job there. Stevie, what do you think about the managerial situation? Do you think Stevie Hamill's in contention for the job, or is it a case of maybe just thinking too far ahead? Maybe is that fair to say? I don't think I don't think Stevie Hamill is no disrespect to him, but I think Mother will need somebody to go in there with a lot of experience and really kind of get that house in order. Yeah, it's again if it's going to be similar to the St. Mirren situation, if they're going to struggle this year. Um, do you want an inexperienced manager to be in that situation where you're in a dogfight? Um, I don't. It's a tricky one. I, I thought they were a wee bit trigger happy. To be fair, with Graham Alexander, you've you've you're hardly into the start of the season, and you're pulling the trigger on him straight away. If you were, mm-hmm. if you already, to me, that tells me they already had that in their mind. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I think that. If you're going to do that, do it in the close season so that you can get a manager in who can structure the team in a certain way and bring his own kind of style of play and his own players in so it's they've shot themselves in the foot a wee bit here to be fair um, I, I like the shout there of Kevin Thompson I know Kevin and he's he's done a, a he's done a fantastic job at Kelty Hearts brilliant job uh, he got them playing a, a, a fantastic brand of football and if we're going down the, the kind of mantra of young up and coming coaches that, that seems to be Maybe not in Scotland, but south of the border, they seem to be going that way. It, they have a, a kind of habit of calling anybody over a certain age a dinosaur in football down mm-hmm. there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go as far as that. However, if they want to go down the model of a younger coach, I, I would, I'd be giving my back into Tomo anyway, hundred percent. I can see the argument for Kevin Thompson. I think he is a good manager. I think I, I was surprised he left Kelty. To be honest, I know there was obviously talk of potentially going to QPR and helping out with uh, Michael Beal. I don't know if that ever came to much. I don't uh, only obviously Kevin don't know that better than anybody, but I think at Motherwell now, it's Matthew, it's you're getting in there and you're again, as we were saying about St Marin, you've lost Tony Watt in January, you've not replaced him, you've then sold Kane Woolery and you look at their signings and Blyce of Blair, Spattle, Paul McGinn, they're good, solid SPFL players, but you're not solving the issue of you've lost all these goals, you've lost all this creativity and you've not really replaced it. Yeah, I think definitely there is a sort of concern as to where the goal would come from. And I think um, losing Tony Watt to Dundee, Dundee United, I think yeah. it was, um, I think that certainly had an impact. You could see, I know that um, Muffinwell last season were doing quite well and lead up to Christmas. Mm-hmm. And then I think it's only four wins in the whole calendar year. And we're now starting August. So I think that could have had a, a factor in Alexander leaving the club as well. So I think it's getting an uh, experienced and um, prophylaxed um, striker and someone who can score goals in there would be the priority for whoever comes in. Yeah, I think it's. I think it needs to be done quickly. I think you've got a, a toothlessness that you see. I think there was no real ch- chain of chances created. I mean, the goal's an own goal, but Steve, we'd love to give a word to St. Johnson. Obviously, a, a big 2-1 result. It's Jamie Murphy with the early goal, and then, obviously, you would think losing a, a late equaliser would put, their, put them down, but Stevie May comes up and scores a late winner, and it's three points for Callum Davidson's side, and the lot was in on Saturday. Yeah, huge three points again for Callum Davidson. He's been under a bit of pressure as well, which is 
mental when you think about what he'd done a couple of years ago. But uh, uh, it's a huge three points. And again, games like that, Motherwell, St. Johnson, your St. Mirren's, your uh, that that kind of area, they could go either way. And sometimes the difference maker is the goal scorer or the creative player. So if if you're struggling to get any of them on the pitch for you, then it's it's going to be a hard, hard, long season. But Stevie May has been doing it for years. He's a proven goal scorer. He's, uh, he's, uh, it's an instinctive finish from him. And the first goal for Jamie Murphy is a fantastic finish. Great yeah. goal. Yeah, it's good to see him, obviously, getting a, getting his feet back, obviously, after what happened in the, his, the injury at Rugby Park. It's good to see... Jamie Murphy looks if he's enjoying his football again, which I think is brilliant for a player who's obviously come through injury. And it's, I think he's at the right kind of sort of club to, to because he will be a key man. He will he will play games if he's fat. He'll be he'll be playing. I think. You look at even St Johnson's bench, Matthew. Obviously, we'll touch on your thoughts in the win, but they've got a lot more than Motherwell when it comes to kind of getting goal scorers. Like you've got the likes of Stevie May, Ali Crawford, the young boy that was at Kelty last season, whose name just escapes me. They've got players they can bring on, and obviously they they brought on Stevie May and they won the game. Yeah, I think you know when you look at um, when you look at um, making substitutions and the back bench, we've got need to have experience in there, and you know players that can come on and make a positive impact on the game. I think um, Sir Johnson didn't do particularly well in the League Cup group stage. I think there was a few, um, obviously Cam Davison was under a bit of pressure, which is actually, as um, Stephen mentioned, quite mental when you think about um, how well we did two years ago, you know, the double cup winners. Mm-hmm. Um, but going back to the point there, I think, um, you know, fans had the concerns, you know, that, you know, where the goals can come from. But I think when you look at Stephen May, you know, he comes on, his goals, you know, I think they will be fine. Yeah, I mean, it's keen to see. I think winning games like that can only help if you're if you're looking to get out of the the kind of relegation zone where they were last season. But winning games like that are massive, and obviously it'll do a big boost for the, the likes of Stevie May, who he always kind of does come up with goals, but he's not he never really puts a run together. I think a goal like that might kickstart him. We'll get into today's games. We're recording this on Sunday night. We just there was two SBFL Premiership games on Sunday. The Edinburgh Derby, Stevie, Hibs won, Hearts won, Hearts looked to have the game in the bag. Lauren Shanklin scored a terrific goal, you can argue. Does he handle the ball? Let's We'll, we'll touch on that in a couple of minutes. But Martin Boyle, obviously the big talk of the, the week was Martin Boyle was coming back to Hibs after his time in Saudi Arabia. And it's a Martin Boyle-inspired equaliser, last kick of the ball. Martin Boyle gets Hibs a, a much-needed point. But Stevie, I would say that Hearts will feel hard done by not to win that game. They should have easily killed that game off early on. Yeah, 100%. They had loads of chances in that game, especially the start of the first 10 minutes of the second half. They were peppering that Hibs goal. And it just... No, I, I th- a second goal would have absolutely killed that game dead. Um, to me, that's a, a game that Hearts have lost. And it's a point that Hibs have gained. <laughs> So that'll be a point that feels like a win for Hibs. That might be something that kind of kickstarts them a wee bit. But again, yeah, Boyle coming on. and He's a massive signing for them. Obviously, they've got McGeady injured and stuff, and they've got Marshall. Right. Marshall had a couple of right good saves as well, by the way. I thought both goalkeepers, actually, like when they had to be busy, they were. They, they, were, they both done really well, and you know the experience they both have. But you look at Hibs, my big problem with Hibs all game was they were I don't think they, they get three or four passes without giving the ball away. They were always just slacking possession, giving the ball away to Hearts. Matthew, I think Lauren Shankland is going to be huge for Hearts this season. I I think he does handle the ball. But it's it's that it's a really good finish and it's a big finish. I think that's what was missing from Hearts last season was just that real clinical goal scorer. I know Boyce got a few, but just somebody, somebody who's just got that bit of spark and can can finish really well. Lauren Shankland did look, I thought he had a really good game today, actually. Yeah, no, I, I definitely would agree. And I think, um, you know, someone who can, you know, bend that wee bit of firepower to the back line is always important. And I think Laura Shankland has got experience in that department. And I think, you know, Robbie Nielsen, um, you know, that in um, Europe, Europa League this year, playoff round, I think he will look for the same from his squad this year. And I think, um, I'd be surprised if Hearts aren't pushing up um, to um, to be best of the rest this season as well. Yeah, I think that I think they're they're more than you know better than everybody else apart from obviously the big two. But 
Steve, what about kind of Hibs? Like, we'll touch on obviously Martin Boyle coming back and what that's, how big kind of big a boost that will be. But you look at Hibs and you just think, what's what's really, what is that kind of game plan? Like, where's, how's it all setting up? And I, I spoke to a Sunderland fan during the week, actually, who told me about Lee, uh, how Lee Johnson sets up. And I just, I don't think Hibs fans will be patient with that. Like, really, he really wants to keep the ball. That didn't look apparent today. I thought they were really slack in possession. I don't see a part of it like Chris Cadden. Chris Cadden put some terrific balls in, but you really need a finisher for that. You really need somebody who's going to get in the end and obviously be as di- be really direct. I think Hibs, I don't think they've started great, to be honest. Although yeah. they're, they're four points on the board, to be fair. Aye, true. Um, but I, I know what you're saying. I thought today they looked quite powder puff in the front areas. The last third, they were really... No, a, a severe lack of creativity and as you say they were putting two and three passes together and then trying to hit a World Cup diag and it was just getting cut yeah. out and again slack in possession uh, I mean even even the goal they had a couple of opportunities to clear that there mm-hmm. and it, it, the defender could have cleared that he's, he's kind of standing off him a wee bit um, but I, 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 unless they get a bit more creativity then you're right they, 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 they've, the Hibs fans won't stand for that I've, I've been there when it's not been going well for Hibs and that big boom machine just gets started up at, at, at behind that goal and before you know it you're, the manager's out of job and, and they're, they're struggling again to, to name somebody else uh, but hopefully with McGeady coming getting fit again and with Boyle coming back hopefully get big dodge, dodge to start scoring some goals maybe they'll, 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 they'll motor up the table but again to me, that's that's a heart's loss rather than a Hibs draw today. Yeah, you look at obviously like Kevin Nisbet to come back as well. He'll really need to find his groove quickly. Obviously, last season he was quite disappointing. I thought I was expecting more of him last season to to continue his form of the season before. But Matthew, there are three things certain in this world: death, taxes, and a yellow card for Ryan Porteous. And he was <laughs> lucky it was not a red again. Now I do not want to be. Bitter, and I'm not going to be bitter, actually. I've not been bitter. That's maybe the wrong thing to say, but Ryan Porteous is a walking disaster zone. Anytime he puts a tackle in, it's there's no la- there's no thing of keep 11 men in the park. I do not understand what he is doing there. Now, it's not been brought up as much as I thought it would be, but it is a horrendous tackle, and it's something that he needs to stamp out of his game because I'm fed up telling, telling people I speak to, Ryan Portis has got all the talent in the world to be a top defender in Scottish football, but we again are talking about him making silly rash errors that result in bookings, that result in him getting bad publicity and potentially putting Hibs at risk in a big game like that again. Yeah, I think um, he was, was um, a very, very lucky man not to get um, a red card there. As you say, it's those type of, obviously mentioned is that, Top defender, you know, really good, um, really good footballer, but it's those type of, you know, rash, maybe erratic ta- tackles that you make in football matches that, you know, you just simply can't get away with. And it is something, you know, as I say, you know, Ryan Port is, you know, really big for um, Hibs defence, you know, if he did have to miss a game uh, um, due to a red card, you know, who knows, um, for what a game, say they get beat, you know, and people might think, you know, we might, we might have won that or got a draw if maybe he was involved. So I think it is something that, you know, it would, this needs to get out of the system. Yep. Stevie, what do we think? Were you impressed with Hearts, like the way they were playing? The likes of Joyce Grant, the midfield, the likes of Cochrane, I thought it was a good game. I thought at times Hearts were playing some good stuff. And it's not like Robbie Nielsen's teams to be playing the ball on the ground and really kind of trying to keep possession. But I thought at times they were good to watch today I thought that I, I do think there's a, a bit of difference in the way Hearts are going to set up this season uh, 100% they looked really good and I was very I'm always impressed when Barry Mackay's playing as well he's just got a he's just a different way of looking at the match and a different way of playing and I'm uh, thank God he got rid of that Jack Grealish haircut he was cutting about with an officer. <laughs> but uh, I mean on Ryan Portis as well I would agree with you he's got all the ability in the world but to me it's a mentality problem he's 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 playing to the gallery. I mean, there'll be Hibs supporters there cheering that tackle. Do you know what I mean? That's just, but that's in the long game, that's never going to serve you right. That's just going to be, it's going to turn into a disaster for him. He's going to get a reputation. And then your normal yellow card tackles are going to turn into reds because the ref's going to have that preconceived notion about him and judgment as, him, as a player in his head. So 
I, I wish he would sort that out because I, I absolutely agree with you. When he, when he plays as a defender, he's really, really good. He's mm-hmm. good at stopping the opposition. Um, however, when he goes over the, over the um, let's say, the, the, the normal rules of <laughs> professional football, mm-hmm. it's, it, it's, it's either plays well or break somebody's legs. There's, no, there's never an in-between in there. I remember having a debate with, when we were on here. I think it was one of the really early shows we did and we were talking about Scott McKenna, Ryan Portis. I think somebody pulled out the Scotland squad and I'd said, look, Ryan Portis is a better technical player than Scott McKenna. Yeah, I agree. Scott McKenna's yeah. playing yesterday in the Premier League. <laughs> do, you know I mean? like, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't, I don't have that people who think, oh, he doesn't like Ryan Portis. It's not that at all. I just know he's talented. But again, as you say, it's all about just that cheap pop and it's a, sorry to borrow a wrestling term, but it's just about getting that reaction from the crowd. It's not about, if Hibs go down to 10 men today, I think Hearts won that game 3 or 4 now. Like, I really do. I, Hibs did have a lot of good, uh, did, they did have possession, they did, they did have a, I think they had more of the ball than Hearts, but I was quite astonished to see, but the stats of that, but you look at, it's just one bad tackle away, and we saw it last season, you just, it's not about, like I wrote, I wrote last year, Paul Hanlon's there, speak to Paul Hanlon about, Experience, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, imagine what Paul Hanlon will be saying to him, like, sort yourself out, get focus in the side, focus on keeping 11 bodies in the park. No, he could have easily have saw red for that today. And I'm not, I'm not saying that because I don't like Ryan Portis, I think Ryan Portis is, has got talent. But again, we're talking about him for making rash tackles other than what, what I think he's got. And I think he's got potential to be a decent player. But I think now, I think he's going to end up. Stuck at a, a team like Hibs. No disrespect to Hibs, but he's not going to be like McKenna. He should be looking at Scott McKenna and going, That's where I want to be. That's where I want to put my performances to be earmarked towards going to the Premier League or, or the Scotland squad. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. But the points were shared between Hibs and Hearts. The final game of the day, the D United after obviously a magnificent result on Thursday night beating AZ Altmar, hosted Livingston at Tanadice and a magnificent goal from Montano gave Livingston the 1 0 win. Matthew, we'll touch into the United in a wee second, but Livingston, that's the games you need to win if you want to stay in the league. And again, Nubla, to me, looks he does look a real find. He was really impressive last year at Abroath, but two games already in the, in the Premiership, and he's he's really caught the eye. Yeah, definitely. I think um, it does look like to me um, that he will do well in the league. And, you know, I think... Um, I've spoke to David Martindale a few times. Is he always says that his target is to finish tenth in the league, and always well, the past few seasons or two, it always seemed to go above and beyond that. And I think you know, um, Martindale will be the same. It will be ten place finish, but um, you know, definitely could look to break into the top into the top six. I know they um had missed out last season, but there's no reason to suggest why they can't can go for it again. Yeah, I, I really think Livingston can be a team to watch this season. We will talk about it last week in the, the preview prediction show. Stevie, David Martindale has obviously been a, a busy man this week. He's come under a lot of criticism, unfairly in my opinion, but that's a big one. That's a big one going to Tanadice, especially after the, the confidence that the, the United will be under. But going there, winning that game, a really good goal as well. Very good for, for morale at Almondville. Yeah, 100%. Again, it's... I, I, I agree with what he's saying in terms of his target is 10th position because a club like Livingston, I don't know what kind of finances he'll be dealing in, but I would imagine they'll be in the kind of bottom three for <laughs> for finance packages in terms of wages and budget and things like that. But um, definitely been overachieving the last few years. And they've actually, it's a difficult place to go to as well in, in, um, in terms of Almondville. But even Livingston going away to Dundee United with, with, with their good result through the week, that's a huge, huge result for Livingston. That's something they can but they can use that as a base to move forward for the rest of the season because if they can go up there um, and beat Dundee United in their own patch they could probably go to most places in the Premier League other than the old firm and, and give anyone a game yeah I mean they're always they always pick up wee results I think last season they went to Hibs and Hearts and both won like they can they can yeah. get results and you've got likes of Nubly there and you know, Bruce Anderson I think was in the bench but you've got two players there who can find the net Hold the ball up well. I thought Nubly was terrific last week against Rangers. I thought he yeah. was he was giving them a torrid time, and I think he will do well in the Premiership. Matthew Dundee United, obviously, we know on Thursday night they had a magnificent result beating Altmar, but 
what went wrong today, do you think? I think, um, I mean, the, the, obviously they've got the old saying that goes and they've got that European hangover as well, you know, from the win on um, Tuesday. I think, um, you know, it's really important, you know, obviously they've seen before then the likes of Rangers and Celtic, you know, they, a good win um, in Europe and then a below average performance in the Premiership at the weekend. And I think getting that balance right is something that would be, is really important for Jack Ross. You know, obviously Tam Courts did uh, a great job in building the foundations and he looked to improve on that. It's getting that balance right. And when it comes to obviously starting lineup, it's making sure that you no know, players aren't too overtired and making sure that they make the correct substitutions. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get into the D United's game on Thursday night again when they go to Holland looking for a result against Altmar. But we'll get into the other three leagues in the SPFL. We'll start with the Championship. I'll just run through the results. Friday night, Queen's Park 2, A United 3. A United obviously coming for 2 now down to pick up a massive result. A Broth 0, Inverness 0, Morton 1, Cove Rangers 0, Partick Thistle 1, Hamilton 1 and Wraith 0, Dundee 1. Stevie, what caught your eye in the Championship over the weekend? <laughs> I'll probably start on a negative funny one but it was the uh, part of this own goal did you see it? yeah did I very bad <laughs> it's 100% straight on to the soccer AM bloopers isn't it 100% yeah. uh, I thought Cove might have went and got a result at Morton to be fair um, they're, um, I've been very impressed with Cove whenever I've uh, seen them uh, but Air United what a what a comeback eh, Friday night Un- unbelievable to be 2-0 down and Queen's Park have been flying as well Good team, Queen's Park Coyles getting playing well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a top result for United. Yeah. Matthew, what about the championship? What kind of caught your eye over the weekend? I would say um definitely the the air game against Queen's Park. I thought um I was keeping a wee eye on the result that night and I thought um the way to come back from the um to come back from behind I thought was um really, really good for the for the building. I think um as Stephen mentioned, you know, Owen Coyle's got um, them flying, you know, wouldn't be surprised to see um, Queen's Park, you know, ruffle a few feathers in the league this year. And um, when you look at the league table as well, you know, not one team in the championship have won the first two league games. And I think that just goes to show that um, the championship is another league to look out for. Yeah, and, I think it's going to be a very open league. I think it's going to be a very open league as well, as you say. Not not one team have won their, their first two games. I have to give a mention to Air. Obviously, I know a few people at the club, and I know how they're they're hoping to get the the kind of the house in order this year. And I think a, a result like that can give you a massive lift. Obviously, been two 0 down. I was texting a few Air fans that I know quite well, and they, they, I was saying if he's left yet, but they stayed on and they stayed on and got the reward a three two win over Queens Park. Again, Queens Park, another ambitious club. It's it's going to be a tough league, I think, that league. Obviously, Dundee picking up a big one over Wraith. A lot of draws as well. Morton, I think, is a massive one beating Cove. I do think, I, I did think Cove would be a, a really good side this season, but it's obviously going to be an interesting league throughout the campaign. Matthew, I'm going to give you League One. Obviously, you're a Clyde fan. Give us the rundown in League One at what happened this weekend. Well, I think um, the first game that you know, I think that caught my eye would be the Adrian and Falkirk Absolutely. game. Um, I think... Um, you know, to win for now, I think um, Falkirk's, you know, I think they've had a few um, difficult years of late, and, you know, appointing John McGlynn, you know, who was very experienced, you know, he got way through was up a couple of years ago from um, League One, so I think I um, would have expected them to make an, make an account of themselves in that game, and obviously they couldn't. I think it shows the unpredictability, you never know um, what's going to happen in any game of football, especially in League One, I would say this year. So, um, not so good for Falkirk. Um, I think Reese McCabe's got a good squad there, you know, for being, a, for being a rookie manager, you know, and I think Adrian will definitely be up and about the top places again this season. Um, I think going on to Clyde and Peterhead, what happened to, to Clyde? They were two and I looked at my four, um, they were two and a lot, and then I looked at them were two each. Do you know, I actually still I can't 
get my head around how what actually actually happened there. I think um, you know, it was two 0 up, um, you know, dominant, you know, flying through the game, and then all of a sudden it's tweet. And I know um, I listened to um Dana Lennon's um interview at the end of the game, and you know, a big disappointment for him would be that you know, we had the game won at twenty minutes, and um, we didn't manage to hold on to it. I think that's really important. Um, I think Peter Head, you know, they've obviously lost, had a good few key players out for the game against Clyde. I think they lost Derek Lyle and Simon Ferry to open yeah. Goldham Hill. So a couple of quite influential players there from last season. And, you know, Peter Head, you know, I actually thought they could maybe struggle this year. But, you know, I think they're a really tough team. They're not really tough to beat them up at Balmore. And, you know, they'll definitely pick up results. Didn't they? Yeah, absolutely. I have, think... to, have to give a mention as well with Alawa and Dunfermline, Stevie, picking up two wins there. Alawa beating Celtic 3-1, as we spoke about. Obviously, Celtic had a disappointing start. But Dunfermline going to Edinburgh winning 3-0, it's, it's, not, it's not an easy place to go, Meadowbank. No, no, it's definitely not. And uh, Dunferm- I'd imagine Dunfermline should be up there. Um, we special mention here, Drew Butt here. Um, oh, yeah. just talk about the squad and stuff. I, I, I know a few guys that are up there just now, and um, they've the boy Reese McCabe is doing a fantastic job for such a young age as well. And to be thrown in at the deep end there and, and being able to guide that team, and it's not, it's no mugs they're playing against either, by the way. So it's a top result for Airdrie. Uh, again, Alaba as well, two back to back. <coughs> Uh, that'll be an, an interesting lead to keep an eye on as well. Um, I see no, it's Queen of South, obviously, <coughs> zero as well. And um, uh, I would, I'd be expecting Queen's to be up there as well, to be honest with you. I th- I've been surprised with you know, obviously Clyde beating them last week. And yeah. you look at obviously drawing them in throws, like obviously it will take a wee while to get going. I've got a lot of time for uh, Wally Gibson that's there. I think he's he's took them at a tough time and I think he's done well in the summer recruiting. I am really disappointed in Falkirk. I had Falkirk to win the league and I'm beginning to look silly because I don't know how, how that's happened because I was very impressed with the recruitment. Joy McGlynn's obviously a man. He's, he's been there and done it. But Airdrie are really impressive. I didn't. I thought it would take them a bit of time, obviously losing Ian Murray to Wraith. And I think Reese McCabe and obviously Callum uh, Fordyce is there as well. They're both a, a decent management team. And I think it will, I thought it would take time to... To get a result of that, but after two games, they look pretty good. They're uh, them and the are top in six points. League two, Stevie, we'll get into the results quickly. Albion one, Dumbarton two, Arne in two, Stenhouse Muir one, East five nil, Bonnie Rig three, four for two, Stranraer nil, and Stirling two, Elgin two. Quick word on your old club, Dumbarton two wins, two games. Yeah, they're looking well. First it was at 2 0 against Stirling Albion, wasn't it, last week? Yeah. Uh, and I'm I'm from Coatbridge, so I've uh, I'll be Rovers as my local club. However, every time I've ever played there against them, I've got absolute dogs abuse. So <laughs> enjoy and seeing them Barton stuffing them too up last night. Oh, sorry, yesterday. Uh, hopefully, the Barton's such a it's got a massive potential fan base down there. I mean, uh, was it we won the league? Oh, uh, 2009 to 2010, or was it? Well, yeah, I think you're right. No, I think you're right. So, I mean, we that was the old third division we won down there and we're coming up the road for Annan and you've got, we've got the Iron Brew, the topless bus and things like that and you've got, th- uh, honestly, thousands of supporters lying in the streets uh, in the town and stuff like that. And it's, the potential for that club is massive. I know they were in the, cha- they, they flirted with the championship a few years ago and um, if I know they probably reached uh, their ceiling in terms of potential there, but... They can get a few results put together. They could um, stretch out a wee lead at the top of that league. But uh, yeah, there's a couple of decent clubs in there as well in that, in that league. But uh, I'm glad to beat Albion Rovers. I get dogs abuse every time I play up. <laughs> Very good. Matthew, we mentioned obviously for Bonnyrigg uh, coming up for the Lowland League. A massive result for them. 3-0 away to East Fife. Bonnyrigg, I really think, could be a team to watch this season. They, they've kept most of their... T- I think they've kept pretty much all their team... They haven't really had to strengthen their, their squad. They've, they've gone to East Fife and won in three now, especially a promoted team. That is a big result. Yeah, no, definitely. And, you know, I think um, Bonnevig are a prime example of, you know, ambitious clubs coming up 
through the pyramid and you know making the mark and two and I think um, definitely seem to be doing that so far you know good positive signs so far from them I mean I watched them when they played Clyde in the League Cup um, group and yeah. they've got they've attained a good bulk of the squad from from last year and you know they're definitely a team to watch and you know, you know, if they keep picking up points, you know, they could um, find themselves um, in the mix of emotion. Yeah. Stevie, would you agree, Bonnie Rag could be one to watch this season? Yeah, 100%. I mean, my last season playing football, I was at um, BSC Glasgow the last, last couple of years and uh, played Bonnie Rag in a pre-season friendly and they were in the league, we were in the, um, the Lone League and they were in Lone League 2, the one below that. Yeah. Uh, blown away by how professional an outfit they were, uh, the standard of their play, uh, the passion of their supporters, don't get me wrong, their pitches are a wee bit questionable, but um, that could work in their favour, bringing teams down there as well. So I was very, very impressed by Bonnie Rig Rose and kind of similar vein to Kelty Hearts. I don't know if they have similar financial financial backing. However, they've definitely got the potential to go up and uh, at least match Kelty Hearts in terms of moving up the leagues. Yeah, I think they could do. I think they could be a team to watch. I didn't have them to win the league, but I think I could be... Proven wrong because I like the way they're going about their business. Obviously, a shout out to Stevie Farrell at Dumbarton as well. Really good start for them. Let's get into what's coming up this week. We've got two big European games to talk about. First one, Ibrox on Tuesday night, I think will be rocking because Rangers play at USG, the side from Belgium in the Champions League second leg. They need to overcome a two-goal deficit. Stevie, can they do it? Can Rangers qualify for the next round? Can they overcome a 2-0 defeat? They've done it in the past. If Ibrox has been big in the past in European games, it will need to be again. Yeah, I, I think they will, to be fair. Um, I speak to, I've got a lot of friends who are Rangers supporters, and uh, I don't, they're not as concerned as, a, as you would think they would be. Um, and I would agree with them because, I, don't get me wrong, like that, that team did a couple of good wingers, really pacey, but however, Rangers were very, very poor. And you take Ryan Ken out of that Rangers team and the creativity goes down by 70, 80 percent. I mean, he's a top, top player. I'm very surprised he's still at Rangers. Um, I mean, if I would have took him before I would have took Aribo, to be fair. I don't know if the numbers in terms of sale sale price were similar, but he's a top, top player. If they can get him, even if they can get an hour out of him and get one goal back in that hour and then put the pressure on for the last half an hour. Um, I would I would throw them in straight away, but I I, I think they'll I think the result will be two 0 and I think they'll go through three 0 after extra time. There you go. So you're going Rangers to win the game two 0 and then win it in extra time. Matthew, what do you think of Rangers versus USG? Will Rangers qualify for the next round? I I don't see any reason why they couldn't. You know, I think as you mentioned, you know, I would not going to be walking and you know. Stephen mentioned Ryan Kent, you know, very influential, you know, get some good minutes out of him. I've obviously mentioned earlier um, about um, Melos getting him back, massive confidence boost, get some minutes out of him. You know, there's, I would have to agree with the score protection as well, um, three to an aggregate. So, yeah, definitely. Okay, so we'll use both get Rangers to go through. I think Rangers can go through, but I think they really need to improve attacking. I think we saw glimpses of it on Saturday, but they need to be from the front foot straight away. You saw last season, they beat better teams in USG. The Ibrox, they beat, I mean, they beat Braga, they beat Red Star, they beat Leipzig. They should be able to be, I don't think USG were particularly great. I just think they took advantage of how poor Rangers were. I think they had a game plan and took advantage of real big mistakes. I think Rangers need to be Careful at the back and just try and go for the. I, I would play a really attacking lineup. I would have Lundstrom, Davis, Tillman. I think has been pretty good since he's come in. I would even play Lawrence, Kent, Matondo, Cholak. I would try and get them all in somehow and just go for it completely from the start and see where it goes. But I think Rangers will. I'm going to go three now. I think Rangers will win. I think Rangers will win three now. I'll be optimistic and say Rangers will go through. Matthew, will Dundee United go through their 1-0 up going to Holland? Will they close it out in Alkma on Thursday night? Um, well, I watched the game on the game at Tannadice and I thought um, Dundee United were absolutely magnificent. You know, really good, you know, um, a great goal from Glenn Middleton. I can't see why not. 
you know, they've got that one goal lead, you know, the, obviously I'm not privy to any um, of Dark Rossi's um, team selections or tactics, but I would think, you know, it would be to keep to keep a hold of that that lead going into the game um, in the coming days and um, just try and get through because it will be, um, again, a massive confidence boost for them. You know, they will look to... Um, improve and get a better result from Livingston um, today. So I think the, there's no reason to dress why not. So give us a wee score prediction before we go on to Stevie. I'm going to say it will be... I'm going to say... I'm going to say 1-0. 1-0. 1-0 and United, yes. So you think the day United will win and Altmar? Stevie, the day United, are they going to close it out in Holland? Uh, I'm not so optimistic. To be fair. Uh, I just think a team like Dundee United, if they haven't really been in that scenario in terms of European football for a long time, and uh, AZ Altmar are a massive club, a big club in Holland, and I just think when you get them at their home ground, it's a lot different than bringing them to Tannadice. You know, uh, I would I would hope they would park the bus, Jose Mourinho style. However. Um, I don't see Jack Ross doing that, to be fair. Uh, I see him pulling something else out the bag. Whether it works or no, then uh, we'll soon see. But I, I've got a funny feeling that Almar are going to kind of run away with it in terms of 2-0, 3-0 on the night. So you think Almar will, will win the game? I think I can see it going. Almar, I think Almar were better than the first leg. I think they're a good side. I follow Dutch football a bit, and I, I know they're better than what they've shown, but the D United were really good, as Matthew says. You look at like sir, Dylan Levitt, uh, Craig Sibble, they thought they a really good game on Thursday. You've got Stephen Fletcher, Tony Watt, all these players looking to just kind of make a make a difference, and I think the, the show Glenn Middleton's goal was terrific, and I thought he had a really good game. I think he's exactly where he should be, a team like the D United, where he can flourish. I think Altmar will score early, and I think the DNA will hold out and equalise, and the DNA will go through 2 1 in aggregate, 1 1 on the night. So I think I, I can see the DNA to go through, but I do think Altmar will be better. It's going to be an interesting game. I'm looking forward to, to this week coming up. We also have a couple of shows coming up on the channel this week. Wednesday, we'll see the, the first West of Scotland football show, and Friday, the newest episode of the Rangers Journey. We'll have plenty of articles out through between now and then. We'll have some women's previews uh, shows for the new season ahead, and we will be looking at some things going on in Scottish football this season. But I want to thank my guests for being on the show this week, Steve. It's a pleasure as always. No worries. Thanks very much, Scott. Thank you very much. And Matthew, it's been a pleasure to have you on for your first episode. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. It's my pleasure. Brilliant. Thank you very much to everyone that's tuned in. Please follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube and podcast channels. We will catch you soon. Thanks very much for listening. We'll see you later.